Hey folks, welcome back to the Beer Wrench Garage and uh, today I'm making a quick video to confess to being a terrible Toyota owner. Uh, this poor car is on its uh, second unintentional 10,000 mile oil change interval. Uh, so it's the second time I've gone in a row 10,000 miles without between oil changes. Uh, this uh, 4Runner is a 2006 model year with the uh, venerable uh, Toyota 2UZFE V8 engine. And so I figured I'd change it all today and get an analysis done and compare it to the last analysis I did uh, on the previous 10,000 mile oil change interval. And uh, I thought it'd be interesting to present that to you, see if there's anything in, interesting in the analysis. So I'm not going to film the oil change because you've probably seen or a million times you don't care about seeing uh, oil change on a uh, V8 4Runner. But I'll come back here in a little bit. Uh, once I have the data back, for me it'll be a couple weeks, for you it'll be a few seconds or at least a minute or so. And we'll talk about that and see uh, how this whole girl does with extended oil change intervals. I only ever run Mobile One Synthetic, the kind you get at Walmart. Uh, I've decided I'm going to switch it over to Amsoil at some point. Uh, but I've just been so behind on the maintenance. It's due for a timing belt. I've been waiting to do the timing belt so I can put some uh, good Amsoil in there. But uh, in the meantime, I'm going to give her some of that good old O'Reilly synthetic high mileage stuff. So, uh, if you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Um, no matter what, give me that thumbs up. And uh, go ahead and leave comments because I'm interested in what your thoughts are. Otherwise, I'll catch you here once I get that oil analysis back and we'll talk some more. Well, folks, I told you I wasn't going to show you the oil change, and I'm really not, but we're all tool weirdos here, and we just love to see uh, uh, drain bolts being popped loose, so I'm going to go ahead and show this part here. We got our uh, 2 UZFE uh, UZF uh, drain pan, and off we go with our Milwaukee uh, 3.8 um, flex head, locking flex head. And if uh, you haven't seen my video on that ratchet yet, as I compare it to my MacGo, um, go ahead and check the link below or whatever link uh, pops up up top here. It's a really neat ratchet. Although not as cool as a MacGo. All right, so I gotta move you just a bit because we're gonna have a splash of oil and you're probably gonna get a little dirty. Also, opportunity to uh, use my uh, Blackstone Collection Cup. It's like a pee cup, but for your car. All right, here we go. It's going to splash really fast. So what I'm going to do is this. And we'll get a little bit of oil for our sample. All right, folks, so new filters on, and you can see the mileage is just under 205, and today is the 12th of March. Uh, so, yes, I'm a very bad, terrible Toyota owner because this is what the old filter says. So the old filter was installed May 27, 2023 at 194,926. So nearly 10,000 miles in 10 months. Yikes. Well... That's uh, routine maintenance there. Uh, so now we'll wait for the oil analysis to get back and we'll sit down and uh, go to the data and see what it shows. Uh, in the meantime, if you're interested or like if you've noticed, uh, this vehicle is a full size SUV and it's uh, sitting on quick jacks. And if you want to see how that works, I'll leave a link up top here or in the bottom below on the video that I made on how the uh, quick jack 7000 TL works on a full size body out frame SUV like this for a runner. So go ahead and check that out. Otherwise, I'll see you here in just a little bit and talk about these data, uh, these results for these oil uh, analysis. I know, I know, you guys wanna get to the oil analysis, but uh, I gotta harp on the, the two UZFE engine a little bit here in Toyota Engineering. So uh, I drained my old oil. My, remember, this is a motor with 205,000 miles and a 10,000 mile OCI. I drained my old oil uh, I always fill six and a half quarts. Uh, so I got five plus in every bit of five and and, a, and then some in that silver container. And then the leftover, uh, there was some oil in the black one, but uh, there was probably at least a quarter to half a quart in the um, black one that I, that I dumped in there. And then remember we took our sample as well. 
and we lost a little bit on the oil filter. So uh, there's dug on near six quarts uh, drained out of this engine uh, on a six and a half quart fill 10 months and 10,000 miles ago on a motor that has 205,000 miles on it and it gets it gets worked you know regularly i don't take it easy so that's a testament to these things these are just gems of engines and um mid 2000s toyota engineering is just phenomenal anyway let's move on to the uh oil analysis okay i'll shut up all right folks so now the uh point of the video that you've probably all been waiting for um i got the uh oil reports back here and I'll uh, as I talk about them I'll put the uh, images up on the video here so you can follow along but uh, uh, this one's a fresh one and this is one I did last year uh, when I did the oil change prior to this one and that also was a 9,000 mile plus run and uh, that this older one was much more uh, city driving so let me put the uh, data up for the old one here and as you can see, uh, aluminum and iron, which are, I think they're materials and bearings and, and um, internal components of the engines, they were up. So as you look at the graphic, you can see the unit location averages and the universal averages. Unit location is for the specific engine in my car. And then universal is, I guess, uh, Blackstone's like uh, repository of these two UZFE engines for all their samples. Uh, anyway, aluminum, uh, iron were up, uh, somewhat concerning. Uh, and then their analysis was uh, aluminum, pistons and bearings, and iron cylinders and shafts stand out in the latest sample from this engine. The increase in iron is due in part to a longer run, but this isn't just normal accumulation since the wear rate is also a bit high. The engine may be a better fit for shorter runs, or maybe uh, the increases reflect harder use. So they're actually pretty right. Uh, it was harder use. It was a lot of city driving, and I'm not, I'm not very easy on the uh, uh, car. So that was a 9,000 mile OCI uh, on very, you know, 75, 25, 70, 30 city driving. Lots of like uh, thrashing of this car. Now. This last oil change that I just did for you guys, it was like a minute ago. For me, it's been a few weeks because it took a while to get the um, data back. Anyway, so now I'll go ahead and put up the most current uh, <clears throat> OCI data. And as you can see, uh, aluminum has uh, come back down a little bit. Iron has come back down a little bit. And so uh, they're a little bit closer to my unit location averages. Uh, but a lot higher than universal averages, which makes sense because I drive the car pretty hard. Anyway, so now aluminum is at 5 ppm and iron is at 19. And the analysis from uh, Blackstone says aluminum and iron came back down in the forerunner's latest sample. We don't know what caused the higher levels last time, maybe harder use, which they are correct. But we're glad to see they show normal piston bearing of steel wire for the 9800 mile OCI. The other metals are in good standing too. So no wear related issues evident at 204,750 miles. So folks, I'm not sure how many conclusions you can draw from the data presented here, but what I can tell you is if you use a good quality oil, uh, like a Mobile One or Amps Oil, in this case, this is Mobile One, a good quality synthetic oil, uh, 10,000 mile OCI is not something you should be worried about. Now, this uh, last OCI for the Forerunner was a lot more highway driving, probably closer to 50-50, maybe 60-40 highway. So that probably evened out the wear a bit. Um, and so if you're if you're doing highway, even if you're going hard on the car, if you use a good synthetic uh, oil uh, and you have a decent amount of highway driving, 10,000 mile OCI is should be no concern. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Now I'm going to enjoy this Box Shiner Light beer and uh, I'm going to see you guys on the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.